Hi, I'm G, this is my art channel, and this is my Star Wars Spurs graffiti mashup. So this piece was a request from one of my nephews, and uh, he's a big Tottenham Hotspur Spurs fan, and it was supposed to be a very football-based uh, piece when it first started out, so it was going to have a load more kind of football kind of stuff going on. So once I had the word, the letters for his name sorted, I decided that I would go around those using a navy blue sharpie, which is what you can see me doing here, just going around the letters and the main idea of the piece. And part of the reason why I'm doing a bit at a time here is we were designing this as we went along. I kept on messaging back and forth and he was sort of giving me some ideas. And all of a sudden it became a very much more, took a big left turn and became a much more Star Wars uh, influence kind of design. So you just see me draw the lightsabers. And here you can see me drawing the Empire logo as a, as a kind of framework, circular framework in the background. So we were just throwing ideas around at each other and uh, he was saying what he liked and I was saying how I could sort of incorporate it into the design. So that's why I've got the Stormtrooper's helmet down here and the wires coming away from it like it's a Stormtrooper droid. That was just my kind of idea, a little riff going on that so I could fill that space uh, that I knew was going to be a bit tricky later on. Now, at this point, I was itching to get in there with the markers and start doing some, you know, nice colors and some fades and some blending and so on. But I start out nice and simple, just doing a simple flat gray, just so I can see the Empire logo. And it starts giving an idea of what I need to do in the foreground. So for the shadows on the letter, you can see me laying down some navy blue pro marker here, just for the main shadow areas, again, to give it a bit of 3D pop. And then you can see me going in with Prussian blue here, just to put in a little kind of a few little extra lines, a bit of extra shadow within the shadow. Gives it a little bit of a, a look, but I didn't want anything too flashy. I really wanted the shadows to really stand out because I was thinking of doing the letters with paler colors. And speaking of paler colors, here you can see me laying down my first layer of color on the lightsabers, which is lavender. And uh, the lightsaber request was that they should be purple, like mace windows. So that's what I'm going for. The second color I decide to add is called spring lilac. And what I do here is I do a solid edge, but then start little doing little dots towards the center. So the center of the lightsaber will hopefully stay, you know, really white and really glowing like an actual, you know, lightsabers in the movies do. So I'm just going around the very, very edges you can see of each of the sort of lightsaber glows that I've drawn in. And then I use exactly the same technique with my darkest color, which is a dark purple called plum. I'm going around the very, very edge, uh, you know, just a very small thin line and then doing some little dots of plum on top of the spring lilac, on top of the lavender. So you've got this kind of very dark against the edge, sort of gently sort of fading out to being very, very light in the middle. And I'm doing it all with kind of like little dots, little pointillism, if you want to get all technical about it, just to make it go from dark to light. And considering I didn't try it out on a rough piece of paper first, I was very relieved to say that the color scheme actually worked and I got the glow that I wanted. Now onto the letters and I'm putting in some shadow using cool gray one to start. And I'm using the fine tip where it's fine. And you can see me reverting to using the big fat chisel tip when I've got a large area of the letters to cover. And what I was going for here was a sort of like cloudy, bubbly kind of effect that was just filling two thirds of the letters from the bottom to the top. And I'm using the, the cool gray number one to try and achieve that effect. And at this point it becomes spot the deliberate mistake there you go, there it is. I put shadow on the bottom half of that O and the shadow should surely be on the very top half so it's in line with the other letters. So a bit of a mistake there, wasn't concentrating and at some point I'll have to fix that later on. Now I'm doing my secondary bits of shadow and this is using cool gray number three and you can see me sort of covering the bottom third of the letters now. And I'm being careful to really try to stay away from the very edge of each of the letters, if you can see. I'm just trying to go close so that the cool gray number one that I put on to begin with shows through as a very light edge. And then you get into the cool gray three. I mean, it's not an exact science because the pens do bleed a little bit. So if you go very close to the edge to just leave a little sliver, then sometimes it can bleed and you don't get much of the edge that you wanted. So doing the wires down at the bottom here, I decided to do them like a British plug would be. So you've got a blue in the bottom left, you've got brown in the bottom right, and you've got your earth wire going straight down the middle there, which is gonna be yellow and then with some stripes on. Add a little bit of shadow to them using navy blue on top of the sky blue and chestnut brown on top of the um, cinnamon. And now you can see me doing the Stormtrooper helmet using Cool Grays 1, 2, and 3. And I was told to keep the Stormtrooper helmet smaller. Uh, my original design had it a bit bigger, uh, but I was told keep it small because um, 
my nephew, the client, didn't want it detracting and distracting away from the letters. He wanted the letters to be the main focus of the whole thing. So as I'm doing the um, Stormtrooper, I'm also doing the eye sockets and bits dark, but I'm not trying to do them absolute black because, again, that would draw your eye, I think, too much towards the bottom. And as I finish up on doing the Stormtrooper, you can see me just add the lines to the earth wire at the bottom. And then I need to do the exposed wires. So I'm using Tulip Yellow at this point, and I've done the exposed wires yellow. But now I'm also doing the buttons and bits of the metallic work on the two lightsabers as uh, Tulip Yellow. And then I jump in and start adding a bit of grey using Cool Grey number one. Now I'm using Ginger Pro Marker to add a little bit of shadow to the wiring that I've done and also using Mustard to add a bit of sh shadow to the yellow buttons that are on the lightsabers. They're supposed to be um, like Mace's lightsaber, slightly simplified and perhaps not as long as the handle on his lightsaber would normally be. So like the Stormtrooper helmet, I'm using a succession of greys. I started out with grey number one, then two. Then you've just seen me add a little bit of um, dark grey on there as well. And a little bit of raw sienna for a bit of shadows on the buttons. Now I'm going in with, I think it was cool grey five to add some of the shadow areas, the really deep dark shadow areas, and also the sort of lined grip on the handle of that lightsaber as well. Then I just had to go in with the black fine line and add a few little details and also add some of those red finger marks from Finn's helmet in The Force Awakens. I just wanted to add something to the helmet, to the Stormtrooper helmet, to make it look a bit more individual. Now here you can see me adding shadows, some thin shadows, to the bottom of the letters using cool grey number four, and also adding a teeny bit of shadow to the top of the O where I should have added it in the first place. And here you can see me using a white highlighter pen. This is the white Posca. And uh, this is a paint pen and it's good for correcting mistakes like that shadow that I put in, but also for adding little bits of highlighty glow on stuff, especially the letters and into the shadows. So here you can see me adding some little white sort of highlights on the edge of what would be the darker bubbles at the bottom. It wouldn't really work on the cool grey number one ones that I did, but to make these darker bubbles stand out a bit, I'm adding some little white highlights. And now you can see me begin to fill the background. And this is about the only bit of blending that I've actually done so far on the whole thing in terms of blending the markers. So you can see me using a whole range of blues from light near the top to dark near the bottom. And the idea here came from uh, Tottenham Hotspur's new strip, their new football strip. And it goes, it's a football shirt that goes from really dark blue at the bottom to sort of gradually to light very, very quickly. Uh, and so they really liked the strip and they wanted me to um, incorporate that into the design. So that's what I'm trying to do by doing it very dark towards the bottom and then getting gradually lighter uh, at about the three quarters um, mark of the actual background. So this was one of the reasons that I put all the wires in to kind of break up this space at the very bottom of the piece because I knew I was going to have to do some blending and if I didn't have anything there and it was just a big area of space then that would be a very, very um, tricky thing to do that blending effectively and make it look good. Uh, so that's the reason why I put all those wires in the background to sort of like break up that space and make it easier. Here you can see me just adding some highlights using a white jelly roll, which is a bit finer than the Posca that I've got. And that's really good for adding some highlights to the helmet and also some little white glows to the lightsabers. I didn't think the bottom of the piece was dark enough. So I found a darker blue than the navy that I was using. This is called petrol. And I had to put this in after the fact and kind of blend along the line where the petrol met the navy using navy blue marker again in the hopes that it would go really dark towards dark and then medium and then light. So that's what I was trying to do here by adding the petrol blue in afterwards. I think it works quite well, but I wished I'd thought about using that darker colour when I was blending the navy originally when the navy background was still pale and wet and then the blend would have been a little bit better. So here I am starting again with a new marker that I had to get because my powder blue, you might have noticed on that first bit of the left hand side, it ran out. So I had to get a new powder blue and then I was able to do this um, kind of last final bit where it's sort of fading slightly from powder blue into white near the top. And then that would blend into arctic blue and then the sky blue which is the colour that I'd already put in there. So just a little blend those two together. Now what you can see me doing is doing the Empire logo in silver and I'm using a very fine Posca pen here, PC1MR, to do this. And I asked the client if he would want any part of it in silver and he said, oh yeah, if you could, the Empire logo. So that's what you can see me doing here, just a flat silver that still looks like light grey but when you tilt it towards the light you get that lovely sheen. Uh, then what I'm doing is adding an extra outline here using light blue Posca. 
I wanted to do all of those things like streaks and drips and splatters and so on, like you get with normal um, graffiti pieces. But the client didn't want that. He wanted it very sort of like straight ahead and crisp uh, and easy to read. And they didn't want anything messing with the background. So um, if you're looking at it going, oh, this is so vanilla. Why don't you do splatters and drips and so on? The client wanted it nice and crisp. And even though nobody's paying for this and I'm doing this as a favor, you know, you've got to do what the client wants. And if the client says they want this, not that, you've got to go with what they want. After all, it's their piece and usually they're paying for it. So I'm just doing this light blue outline around just the letters and the sort of cockerel that you can see at the top just to make them ping off the page a little bit. Had all this white space at the top, so I decided I've got to do something in there. So I did the two moons uh, that Luke can see on Tatooine at the very start of um, A New Hope, episode four. And then I thought I would put a little bit of uh, Besbin Cloud City on the other side. And the, the markers bled a little bit here, which is why you can see me going in with the white highlighter and sharpening up, crispening up some of the edges. And that's it pretty much done. So here you get a little bit of a zooming in close up. So you can see a little bit closer uh, some of the work that you could see uh, in a sort of like further away kind of view earlier on. So you can see the lightsabers with the little crackly dotted effect that I was talking about. You can see the lettering and also the shadows within the lettering a little bit clearer when I go in closer. And also you can see just a bit of the blending and some of the sort of um, outlines. Oh, and the silvery sheen effect there as well. Please don't forget to subscribe, like or share. And if you enjoyed this one, then you might want to check out some of my previous graffiti videos. I think there's about three or four of them on the channel. And I will put some links in the description below. So uh, if you do feel like checking those out, then please do so. Click on those links.